Hi, and welcome to another edition of Adult Arts and Crafts with the Warren County Library. My name is Mary Ellen, and today I'm going to do mason jar makeovers. So I'm going to show you how to make your mason jar look a little bit pretty, or any jar you might have left over in your, from your cabinet. So let's get started. I think the first thing I'm going to do is show you a couple of things you might want to make. Um, I've made this, this jar here uh, following something that I saw on Pinterest. There are lots of ideas on Pinterest, so if you don't have an idea and you're not sure what you want to make, try Google Images or Pinterest and you'll find some things that might interest you. So I tried that one. This is one I'll show you how to paint step by step today with the uh, lavender on it and this is just a plain vase from a spaghetti jar this is not a mason jar you could also instead of uh, doing the shabby chic look you could find a picture that you like and you could put a label on your jar i see some folks are showing up thanks so much what I did in this case was I made a label for the jar after painting it, and then I made it put another label on the back. So for dual purpose, I can sometimes put it out this way and sometimes I can put it out the other way. <clears throat> the first ones I showed, a couple people missed it, were ombre colors, and I just used a little jute around the top to pretty them up. And I have a set that I made that you might make for your bathroom. I know these are hard to see on this camera, but they are pink. But you could put a pump in one for your soap. You could make a smaller one for your, say, your toothbrushes. Or how about using a yogurt container? This was a wee container for your Q-tips. So think about all the storage possibilities that you have with jars that you could use in your house and how you could make them look better. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down onto the table and I'm going to show you how to do it. Thanks for being with me. I see a couple more people arriving. Thanks so much for coming. Happy to see you today. It's a beautiful day. I understand if folks want to watch later, but right now I'm going to show you step by step. So what I did when I was looking for patterns, I went to Pinterest as I do. If you ever took my class in the building, I, called, I call it Pinteresting programs because a lot of great ideas exist there for us to use. So you can see the ombre look was an idea I got from here. The ones for the bathroom was an idea I got from here. And this is the jar that I made looking like that with the Marameco pattern. One that I haven't done yet would be something like this where you could use the uh, napkin decoupage that we've been doing lately in programs. That would also be a beautiful way to do it. So the Marameco pattern follows this pattern, which uh, a friend of mine has on a shade in their home. So here I made the jar to match, and wouldn't that be nice as a gift? So you never know, you might even gift someone a leftover jar that you have in your house. I'm going to just show you where that pattern came from. This came from masonjarcraftslove.com and that was that one and she has step-by-step -step instructions and shows you how to paint them. And the one with the lavender is from itallstartedwithpaint.com and I will show you how I painted mine in that style today during this class. All right, so let's look at our supplies. I did not buy chalk paint for this because I didn't want to spend any money and just like the jars I want to use things that I have in my own house to uh, to make some of these crafts and I know everybody else is in the same boat we're trying not to spend a lot of money so what did I have I have lots of leftover paints in these little containers these little two ounce containers last pretty much forever actually the white that I used is an apple barrel paint that was from Pearl Arts and Crafts and it is ancient and there is nothing wrong with using an old an older paint they all work just fine the one paint that I did buy to try in this case 
was a folk art multi-surface paint. And so I'll show you on uh, one of the jars that I did use this. This is one, if your jar was going to get a lot of use, if you wanted to put it in the dishwasher or something like that, the multi-surface folk art, you can uh, bake off in the oven. It gives you directions on the back. Be very clear and follow those directions. And that says that it would make it dishwasher safe. I don't plan to put any of mine in the dishwasher, so that was not my concern. In terms of brushes, I don't personally like sponge brushes for painting. I, I don't like the, the way that they work. And so I just used for the main painting of the jars, a flat, soft brush like this. And for any of the details, just smaller detail brushes. So nothing special that you wouldn't have already if you did some painting of some kind uh, at home. So I'm going to jump right in. I'm gonna move the paints away. I'm gonna grab a jar here. And where did I put that jar? Oh, here it is. And I will show you how to begin. Now, this is a, a basic ball jar. Um, what I have done is I've washed it with hot soapy water and I've taken uh, a little cotton pad like so with some alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and I pretty much did a good rub down just in case there was any kind of oil or something on there that was going to repel my paint. This is a time too where you want to wash your hands well. You don't want to have oil on your fingers that might get on the glass and repel the paint. So the paint will stick better the cleaner that it is. So I've taken some of the uh, Ceram Coat by Delta, this off-white, and I've put some here in my tray, and that's what I'm gonna paint this jar with, and I'll show you the action I use to paint all of my jars. This particular paint is 97 cents in Target, so even if you have no paint at all. Uh, it's a very cheap project to pick up some of these uh, 97 cent uh, paints. I think you pay like $1.40 if you get it in the Hobby Lobby, but it also does go on sale. So I'm going to just grab that soft brush that I showed you. I particularly like to always pre-wet my brush. So of course I have my water in a, in a jar because that's right, I use a lot of leftover jars. This is a nice one from Jelly. And I am just dampened my brush and, wipe, and wiped it off. Somehow I feel the paint will uh, go on smoother if the brush is not dead dry. Okay, I'm going to move that water to the side. Now, um, it's hard to show you on this table. I'm, I'm inside a box, actually, to show you with my camera. So um, I'm gonna do the best I can to show you. I just wet my brush, um, both sides like so, and I found that doing the top of the jar first worked for me because you've gotta hold the jar while you're painting it. So I'm just gonna quick and dirty, just go around the top of this jar. And you know, you wanna be cognizant of the lines going in the same direction. It looks a little bit neater, but I would put several coats of paint. So this would be just my first coat of paint. And once I have gone around this jar, I'm gonna put a little bit more just around this curve, then it will be super easy for me. Do you see that that's how I've painted it so far? I didn't worry about the top of it so much because I'm gonna put my hand in there so depending upon how big the jar is, sometimes I can only fit a few fingers in, sometimes I could fit the whole hand in, and I hold the jar the rest of the way in my hand while I'm painting. So I'm going to just very quickly, and I like to do mine just in a top to bottom motion. I want to make sure where there are depressions in the jar that you do fill them in. And you can see how easily this acrylic spreads on the jar. And I don't worry about the very bottom of it yet at this point, so I can lay it down and turn it. And now here I am by the word ball. 
I want to make sure I get into all of those depressions around the word. And you see how fast this goes. Now with subsequent uh, layers, it goes very quickly. The one thing that doesn't go quickly is letting it dry. And I find that the most important thing is now give this some time to dry. I, at this point, now I have all the sides done in the top. I generally do put a little paint and do the bottom. Hope that you can see that. If you see something that's a little bit off or if you've missed a spot, you can still fill it in because it will stay damp for quite a while. And now I'm just gonna lay it on the side and let it dry. Now I will let the, that dry <clears throat> for several hours. Um, if you have the time, leave it till the next day and put another coat on. Leave it to the next day and put another coat on. Then you stop when you decide you like the look of it. I like mine to be particularly covered well. Um, if you want this, this uh, very old style look where you're going to rub it off, you might not want to put as many coats on because you're going to do some of this scrubbing off. But, but actually, um, I like to look mine look pretty, pretty much covered. So this probably has three coats on it. Um, the case of these pink ones, I think the pink set I put more on, I think I put four coats on here because I really wanted it covered. So it is quite dry and the longer it sits, the more it will dry. So it's going to be over the course of days, it's going to get quite dry. Now, if you want to give it that shabby chic look with the pieces worn off of it, you use uh, sandpaper. Well, what was the easiest sandpaper to find, especially to do delicate areas? An emery board. So as you can see, an emery board is nice and hard and flat. So you're only going to rub off the parts that are jutting out. I'm gonna keep rubbing these off so you can see, and I hope you can see those parts starting to happen. See the, the bunch of paint? that becomes powder here as I do it. So I didn't do the whole thing so I could do some of this in front of you so you can see. And then I actually will take a, a, a rag or what I prefer is a sponge. I'm gonna grab my, my sponge and a rag over here. Sorry about that. And You'll see that I have removed a section of that, of that uh, color. Now, because I have so many layers on here, it might take me a while to get them all. But as you see, as I go, it's removing more and more of that paint and giving you that etched look. So when you're we're doing a jar, you might want to look at them and see what kind of patterns you find on your jars. If you're not using um, a ball jar, you might use something else. For instance, let's see, what do I have here? Um, I have a Classico sauce uh, comes in the Atlas jar. And what was interesting was that I went to paint one of these Atlas jars and I realized the impression was on the inside, not on the outside. So that did not, it did not rub off well for me because it's the part that's standing out that you're going to catch with your emery board. But then I noticed some of my Atlas jars did jut out. So isn't that interesting? This one is depressed in and this one stands out. So it's something to think about um, when you're going to do it to see if that's the look you're looking for, what type of impression are on your jars. Uh, this is a sauce jar that I have that is just covered with impressions. So this would be a field day for someone who really likes that look of where it is scrubbed off. Put that back down over here. So when you're doing, for instance, the word ball, that's a spot where you want to be careful. You want probably to use an emery board. You don't want to come at it with a big piece of um, sandpaper because you might rub off more than you wanted. 
So you can see I'm putting my finger and pushing down right over the word that is impressed, I guess I'm gonna say it's impressed outwards on the ball jar. And this is the look that people like with these jars. If they're using the chalk paint or the milk paint, and I see no reason why I couldn't just do this very same thing using the acrylics that I have on hand. So now when I wipe that off, you see the word ball is starting to appear. And that is the look that people want with the shabby chic. Um, what I'm showing you with this is that ball does sell pumps. So you could turn a jar into uh, a soap container or a cream container or whatever. I bought this pump in the Hobby Lobby. Uh, it was a little bit pricey at $5.99, I have to say, but um, you could do this yourself. There are lots of um, Pinterest ideas about taking your own pump from, uh, say, maybe you have uh, antibacterial lotion uh, containers or Purell or something like that, and you have a pump left over, you could take your ball lid and make a hole in it and feed this through, and you would have to seal that with a silicone caulk, but you could make your own pumps if you didn't want to go so far as I did um, to buy the fancy stainless steel one, which actually I think looks, looks quite nice and it looks a little bit, little bit more professional. But I'm really a do-it-yourselfer, so, you know... Um, Go right ahead and do it yourself. Now, I'm going to show you how I did the, the lavender. I'll take away my paper flowers. It's handy that I make a lot of paper flowers because I need somewhere to put them. So the more jars I have, the merrier. So this is the jar that I saw someone make online. I put just a ribbon around the top just for pretty. And I'll show you step-by-step step how to paint one of those. What I found was I wanted to first take my jar and look at the area that I had in which to fill, because every jar is going to be a different size. And I just kind of penciled out, this is the piece of paper that I used, I penciled out the shape of that jar. And then I thought, let's try marking the um, stems uh, and this was this my first use of the stems and they're pretty messy but this doesn't have to look fancy either so they might be a little bit um, messy looking and how to do the the uh, the leaves or the grass and then how to do the flowers so I did a test piece first on paper so here's here's a way that that could work and I'm just going to show you that the paint I have put in my holder here, and I used these same paints that I just showed you. Sorry, I'm gonna grab some, grab a couple of brushes. I like to put a little bit of a drop of water in each one because if you thin it out, it's easier to paint. So um, test it out first on paper. So I'm grabbing a little bit of my dark green. I used a dark green a lighter green, a dark purple, and a lighter purple. I used a little bit of white as a highlight, and I used a little bit of black to make a little bit darker green at one point. So uh, I'm gonna just walk you through exactly how I did that. And I have my little glass of water here if I feel I need more water. So the first thing I did, I'm just gonna, gonna lay this down. I'm gonna try not to get paint on myself, because I have not put on my apron, which I really should, and I'm usually good about that. Um, I just would draw the brush upwards from the bottom to make a stem. So if you practice this on your paper first, I would totally suggest that. I found the stem for me the hardest thing to do. So get a flow going. Practice it on a piece of paper before you get to your jar because your jar has already been painted and you don't want to immediately ruin it. I'll tell you a secret. The first 
The first two stems I put on here were so bad, I immediately washed them off with a sponge and started again. So practice it on your paper first. So there's the stems. The grass I find to be a lot easier and the grass <clears throat> is the little bit lighter green and that is coming up from the bottom and just making a little a little swirl like so next to your stems and you can really go crazy with it and put a lot of them in if you want um, they're they're the kind of I think the fun part is putting these little pieces of grass along the bottom and then the next part you do is the flowers and the flowers rinse out my brush are very very simple I'm just using the same brush I'm just gonna grab some of this some of this dark purple and if you are just laying your brush down it leaves a nice little point do you see that I hope I'm making this possible to be seen Let me grab a little more of that paint and I find the point if I go to, from the outside like so it makes a nice point and let's stop there rush rinse out my brush and use the lighter the lighter purple and I can just do the lighter purple on there and then lastly a little bit of the white as a highlight. So let's do it on the jar and see if I can make this happen without totally messing it up. So I've got a totally plain jar. I've got a jar that I did put some stems on yesterday while I was at work. And I have some that I put some grass on. So you could see the stem and I could come on top of this one and I can make it a little bit thicker if I want. But if you can make it in one motion, it's probably safer than coming back again and again because the next thing you know, you get offline and it's not doing what you want. So um, what I could do here, I have the stems. I, what I might do is start putting my flowers on and I could actually put my grass on last so let's just see if I can do that for you here I would say that I want to start my flower up here so I'm going to do some of these pointy ones and I think this paint is a little bit thinner than I wanted but that water I did put a drop of water in it so it's not really giving me a good point but it's okay it's not bad so I'm just going to do my dark now technically you could let that dry I'm not that concerned about it because it's the same flower and maybe I want to just blend in a little bit of the lighter and you don't have to put it in every single spot but it does it does look nice to add that lighter shade and I got a little tiny bit of white and it might it, it might not be seen right here because this is not really it's a little too wet but there's the white detail and in order to add grass down there I'm going to just fling it up from the bottom now, there's no reason you can't put more than one color of grass as well. So I'm going to add some more. And the reason I had the black was if you wanted to make a darker green and you don't have any other dark colors, you could just put a little bit of black in your green and it makes a darker green. So I hope that gives you an idea about what it looks like to do this. I'm sorry, my, I think I just have too much water in that purple. I might just add a little bit more just cause I feel like it looks runny and I'm trying to do it quickly on camera and I don't want it to be that runny. 
it actually is running. The good part about the acrylic is you've painted the jar, so you can go back and paint over that spot, or I can just add a couple more bits up there, like so. It doesn't concern me that much that that is like that. So I do a couple here. So you get the idea. You can always come back if there's a little bit of something showing that you don't like. You have this paint because you have painted the background and you could paint it in. Even if I wanted to paint in and make this a little bit thinner, I could do that too. So I hope you understand that it is difficult uh, painting on camera. So everything there does not always go perfectly. All right. So the next one I was going to show you was this jar. Now this was a jar that someone found at the library, so we don't even know what was in it. And I painted it with the multi-surface glass paint. This is for any kind of surface, so you could put put uh, use it for wood or glass or whatever. And it, it gives more of a shine. So you can see that it actually has a, a very much of a satin finish is what it says. It did a very nice job on the jar. I did a few coats of it and it's very smooth and it's also shiny. And so what I did then was I searched online for pictures that I thought were a good color and a nice picture that might go, for instance, in one of my bathrooms. So I found this picture that I liked and I found it on Pinterest. And so I printed this out and I cut it and I put it on here. And what I found was you really don't want to have it where the curve is in your jar. If you understand what I'm saying, I want, I want it to fit firmly to the jar. So if it's a little too big like this, the picture's going to be, the, the label's going to be, be bent up at the top. So I took it back to my computer and I just used Publisher and I shrunk it down a little bit. I put some contact paper on it. So the contact paper on this is just a little bit larger than the size of the picture. And so it covers the label, the, pa the paper perfectly and it adheres very nicely to the jar. But you also see with this satin finish, I could peel it off if I wanted to, but it will stay clean, it's wipeable, it's, it's uh, you know pretty much washable with a sponge, or I could easily rinse it in the stove, in the uh, sink, not in the stove. Um, you could set this paint in the stove if you wanted. Um, also, 21 days on the counter, it will become permanent as well. So you really don't have to set this paint in the stove. Um, my other bathroom uh, will have colors that match this better. So if I want to put it in the green gray bathroom, this side fits. If I feel like putting flowers in the other bathroom, I'm gonna use this one. So that's just an idea to give you for something that you might do with your jar. I'm sure you have lots of ideas about what you're gonna do with your own jars. And you know there are so many jars out there. I was able to pick up this neat little jar in, um, in the uh, Hobby Lobby with these impressions on it. So this would be perfect for one of those sanding projects. And this would hold a lot. So um, keep your eyes open for something that you might want to paint or just use your leftover jars that you have um, from items that you use, like your sauce or whatever. Now, I just wanted to mention uh, ball jars for a moment. If you have real antique ball jars, I wouldn't suggest painting those over. They are beautiful as is. Um, just wanted to give you a little bit of a history of the ball jar. This is one that I have. Um, let's see, where did I put that? You can date your bowl jar by the logo on the jar. So I can see on my jar that this jar was made between 1923 and 1933. 
This is one without the line underneath the word ball, and it is that classic blue color. The manufacturing of ball jars began way back in 1884, and the blue color is, uh, of these original jars was due to the materials, uh, the minerals that were in the glass. So when this was fired and the, and the glass was made, this beautiful turquoise blue color came out. Um, at the time, it was felt that a, a colored jar will extend, extend the life of any food that was inside of it um, because it does block the sunlight to some extent, even though it is quite transparent. So know that if you have antique jars, they are collectible, they are saleable. Um, they're not worth a real lot, but you never know. Uh, if you have one that's uh, particularly interesting to a collector, you might be able to sell it on Etsy or elsewhere. Um, a friend of my husband's had collected these ball jars, and when they found they, they were being sold online for you know not a real lot of money, they decided to gift them to me, which was really, really a nice thing. So I keep a rock collection in one. I keep, you know, different collections, um, you know, uh, sea glass or whatever you might keep in a ball jar like this. So um, I hope that, you know, that inspires you to think about the jars that you have, what you might want to put in them, what you might want to do with them, and then how you might want to decorate uh, jars. The uh, directions on this just had you making that very simple flower, and it was colors of paint that I had in my collection, so I didn't have to buy something. So I hope that this was of interest to you. I hope you get a chance to try it yourself, and if you do, let me know. If you've taken any of these online classes, stop into the library and let me know. That would make my day. I'll be there till 8 o'clock tonight. No, starting Monday, we'll be open three nights of the week until 8 o'clock. That's Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 9 to 8. And every other day, we're open 9 to 6, uh, Saturdays, 9 to 3. So um, stop in and see us. We are there. You can browse. You can do everything you could do before in the library. And I really appreciate you guys coming on and visiting with me today on such a beautiful, sunny day. So paint up some jars. Make your life a little brighter. That's what I'm trying to do. So see you next time at Adult Arts and Crafts. Bye-bye. Have a good afternoon. Thank you so much for coming.